It's been a minute since I watched something by Full Moon and I have watched a few of these here on my channel at this point. The two that I can remember is Head of the Family and then I watched Arcade and I've watched a couple of other things as well. But I didn't know what I wanted to delve into next by this production company who have made some incredibly strange movies over the years. And then Amazon Prime added this movie into their catalogue and it has now become available to watch for free if you're a Prime member. So what better than a movie that has possibly aged horrendously and may now also be rather politically incorrect. But if you don't know anything about the creeps from 1997, let me quickly fill you in. Dracula, Frankenstein, the Wolfman and the Mummy are alive and they are angry. These scary subjects have been brought back to life, but there is a problem. The creator has made one tiny error. The frightening fiends are only three feet tall. Three feet tall and not happy about it. Now the mini monsters must embark on a mad mission to complete their creation at any cost. If you're new here, I go by Hordes, and if you're not new, welcome back. I talk about horror movies here on my channel on Mondays and Fridays, but as always, when it comes to watching movies that I have never seen before, I am now gonna go and watch The Creeps from 1987 off camera. So that way, if you two decide that you wanna watch this movie about classic monsters in a much smaller size, nothing will be spoiled for you because nobody wants to watch a movie that you've just watched somebody else watch from start to finish because then you're gonna know exactly what is gonna happen. And I keep it spoiler free here on my channel. Earl, you're overreacting. I read a few things online about the creeps before I actually decided to watch this one. And I can only say that I can come at this one from my own point of view, from my own perspective, and say that I really don't think that the representation in this movie is as problematic as some people are trying to make out it is just going off of reviews like there will be a tangent later on where i try and explain this point but is this the worst full moon movie that i have seen like no and it was nowhere near as bad as i was expecting it to be based on what certain reviews were saying about it calm down bob I the movie is an hour and 14 minutes long and the synopsis that I described in the beginning doesn't actually come into play until the 32 minute mark, which in all honesty is probably around the halfway mark because this movie does actually have opening credits and end credits. The beginning you find our scientist who is looking for a copy of Mary Shelley's Frankenstein in like a library archives section. And then there's a bunch of filler stuff and then the monsters actually get created, which was the point that I actually became interested in this. And the monsters in this are like a love letter to literary classic monsters, which is only hammered home in the end when there's a scene when Anna is talking to Dracula. Like all of that part is great, but my issue is there is just so much filler. There's so much filler in this and it really does slow down the pacing of this movie. If you took out all of the filler in this, this movie would just be 32 minutes long. All right, snip, snip, snip. Sure, it does have its moments, but they are sandwiched between a layer of air and a layer of meh. And Dracula is the best part in this and no one will convince me otherwise. The roles of Frankenstein, Dracula, the mummy and the wolfman slash werewolf aren't parodies. They are serious versions of their literary counterparts. They have the same memories as they do in the books. They have the same personalities that we know about them. They remember each other. They just happen to be in shorter bodies and remember being much taller. They are still monsters. They haven't been turned into like parodies to poke fun at them because they're now played by actors who have dwarfism like there's none of that like dracula is still menacing even though he is now a much shorter actor however there is another character in this that i have seen absolutely nobody online talk about who is problematic for a slightly different reason because nobody mentioned the predatory lesbian librarian who at one point is getting her rocks off in a library by rubbing a copy of Jane Eyre across her chesty besties 
And that's problematic because there's a whole harassment in the workplace storyline going on here and that that wouldn't fly now, no. no. Being a full moon production, it is obviously gonna be cheap. At some point, somebody is gonna be topless. And if you're not aware of this, you are probably new to full moon. The CGI is terrible. Uh, again, it's something that you've come to expect from full moon. At no point am I expecting like wondrous, amazing CGI that will blow my mind. But I do have to point out that the actual like prosthetic makeup in this is fairly decent on camera and I love that all of our four universal monsters are in full prosthetics and you can 100% tell who absolutely everybody is supposed to be so big props to that because they didn't actually dumb down any of the makeup traces like Dracula with his red contact lenses great Frankenstein with his full prosthetics great same for the mummy same for the wolfman no complaints about makeup god I love your makeup now I feel like it is important to bring this part up. Going off certain reviews that I have seen on IMDb, you would think that this was possibly the most politically incorrect movie that Full Moon has ever produced now in retrospect. And I have to disagree with this because it is not a parody. You have four actors who happen to be playing our lead monsters who all have some kind of dwarfism. I'm going to use the umbrella term because there are multiple types of dwarfism in here. And at no point have I come across a review from somebody who has a type of dwarfism talking about this movie. And if I had seen somebody who had the same conditions say that this movie was problematic, that's whose voice that I would have chosen to listen to before I watched this movie. I think we can all agree that representation in movies is really important and roles should be played by actors who are the most appropriate fit for that role. And it should be based on talent and what somebody can bring to the role. And you don't want to reinforce negative and harmful stereotypes or introduce new harmful and negative stereotypes around a minority group of people. Now, if you think that this movie has the potential to be politically incorrect, I am going to say from my personal opinion, I do not think that this movie is politically incorrect when it comes to who is playing its monsters. And this is where I bring my tangent in because I am going to prove why I think that having this mindset is potentially harmful and I'm going to provide images for this. So bear with me as I think this is important. Here in the UK, we have a type of theatre known as pantomime. It has been going on for years. It is a family friendly type of show that you often see pop up around Christmas up and down the entire country. The lead characters in this can be played by either male or female or non-binary characters. So somebody like Peter Pan, for example, can be played by any gender. And there are characters known as pantomime dames that are are played by men in full campy over-the-top drag but in the past couple of years there's been some controversy around the show Snow White and the Seven Dwarves as a couple of theatres rather than casting actors as the roles of the dwarves who have been playing these roles for years and continue to want to play these roles for years because they rely on them instead chose to replace them with full able-bodied actors who were playing the roles of the dwarves on their knees in the same way that the character of Lord Farquaad is played in Shrek the Musical, which is problematic all on its own. So no, I don't think that, that we should be taking away roles from people who want to play these roles, who rely on these roles, and who are happy to play these roles because a tiny group of people have decided that they are offended by this because of prejudice. So we are taking away these roles and technically erasing people because of pure ignorance. If a minority group is telling you that something is offensive, listen to their voices and amplify them rather than talking over them and speaking on behalf of them. I would like to think that here on my channel, if you don't know, I am a queer cis woman. If I came on here and was like, this is a really negative and harmful LGBTQ stereotype and I don't think that this is okay, I would like to think that people heard my voice and were like, we're gonna take this into account because maybe she's right on this one because she's part of this minority group. And I can't speak for people who have achondroplasia or dwarfism of any variety because it is not something that I experience on a day-to-day -day basis. 
So while I don't think that this movie is politically offensive and incorrect from my point of view, I cannot say the same if I spoke to somebody who lived with this condition on a daily basis. The lesson is over. Would this movie get made today? That is the real question and in all honesty, my answer to this is both yes and no because we live in a world now where there is always going to be somebody who gets offended because of ignorance or prejudice. So in the end, I am actually going to give The Creeps from 1997 a 2.5 out of 5 stars because I do not think that this movie is as bad as some people are trying to make out it is. It is not a parody. Even though it's a horror comedy, the monsters are serious monsters who mirror their original counterparts. They just happen to be played by actors with dwarfism and the actors do a really good job portraying them. I can't say the same about the rest of the actors though because there are some questionable acting choices here. And I do think that the plot is very 50-50. If you got rid of all the filler, it would be a much better movie, but you'd be left with a 32 minute movie and it is a very slow hour and 15 minute movie. So there you have it, my initial thoughts and my review for my first time watching The Creeps from 1997. I promise I don't always go on such a tangent, but I felt like it was needed in this case. If you have seen this movie, I would love to know what your thoughts and opinions are on it down in the comments section down below. Is this one that you would be interested in watching or is this one that you would skip? If you do want to watch it though, I will leave a link to justwatch.com in my description bar so you can find out where it is streaming in your country. If you would like to know every single horror movie I watch though, not just the ones I talk about here on YouTube, you can also find me over on Instagram and Letterboxd at Hordes of Horror, or maybe even stick around and join the Horde here on YouTube. But I will be back on Monday with another solo movie review, and this time it is a little revenge movie that I found from 2010, because sometimes bullies get their comeuppance, and in some cases it is really deserved. So until next time, bye. Thank <laughs> you.